Hi, I'm Steve Grzini, co-founder of MoviePicks.com and author of the MoviePicks.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. And here we are in Premiere Elements in part two of our basic training series. Now, of course, before you can start editing any video project, you need to get your video and other media into the project. We can do that by going to the Add Media button here in the upper left. Now, I have my AVCHD camcorder connected via USB. I have it set to VTR mode or playback mode. So when I select Add Media, I'm going down here to video from cameras and devices. Now these devices could include your camcorder, they could include your iPad or your iPod, they could also, or any tablet actually, any generic tablet, as well as uh, your phones of course. So if you want to get video from any device that stores the video on that device, this is the option you want to select. Now if you're getting video from a DVD, and I'm not talking about a commercial DVD because that has some other issues, but you're getting it from a DVD you created or from a DVD camcorder, you want to finalize the disc, put it in your computer drive, and then use this option. They're both going to get you to the same screen, and that is the video importer. So let's select this option, and this is the video importer. As you can see, it's creating thumbnails based on the video clips that are on my camcorder. If you have other sources here, you can go up to the source menu at the top, and you can see I have my Canon camcorder. I also have another device plugged in that's charging on my computer right now. If I had an iPod plugged in or I had a DVD in my DVD disk drive, this is where I would select that option for my source. So I'm looking at individual clips here. I can even preview these individual clips. So for instance, I can click on this clip right here and then click on the little play button in the lower right hand corner. It takes a second to conform it. And there I can preview the clip before I select it. Obviously you can see that you select what clips you're going to import by checking them in this little media browser box. You can uncheck all by clicking that option. You can select only the ones you want to import. Now, before you import them, you notice sometimes there's some options selected over here. Right here, one of the options is creating an instant movie. I don't want to do that. I may want to delete them from my camcorder after I import them. This will automatically do that for you. Sometimes you want to add them directly to your timeline too. Up here, you select where your media is going to be saved. I have a folder on my computer right here on my D drive called 2015 video folders and here's where I'm going to be saving my media. So I'll select that option. Now this option here under presets uh, is set to untitled by default. That's kind of goofy. Anyway, I always select custom name and then I can call it what I want. So if I want to call it food tours, I can type that in there. It's going to create, as you can see noted underneath, food tours 001, food tours 002 based on the clips that I select. So once I select them, I click on get media and the program will import the media from the camcorder to my computer's hard drive and then it will pop open the project assets panel and there are the video clips that I copied from my camcorder to my computer's hard drive and imported into my movie. Now you know that any media you use in your project must be on your computer's hard drive. If you connect your camcorder and then try to import media from your camcorder using another means besides the video importer that media is still on your camera and once you disconnect your camera from the computer you're going to lose that connection. So the media needs to be on your computer's hard drive. Now we could also add media another way and that is to go to add media here and select files and folders. You can also use the elements organizer which I spend about three chapters describing in uh, our books the moviepix.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. I'll show you everything there is to know pretty much about the Elements Organizer. But let's keep it simple today. We're just going to go to Files and Folders. And here when I go to Files and Folders, I can browse to my media files. And I can select one or hold down the Shift key or the Control key or the Command key. And I can select all of the media files I want to add. And they will be imported also into my Project Assets panel. Now you notice I'm working in the expert view space. If I were working in quick view and I add media, no matter what method I choose, notice that when I select my media and open it, it is added directly to my timeline. In fact, there is no project media panel in the quick view. Any media you add is immediately added to your timeline. I'm usually working in the expert workspace. And so my media is added to project assets where I can do some preparation work before I add it to my timeline. 
And as I said, once I add the media clip to my timeline, the program will automatically set up the project settings so that they match or conform to the media. Once we've done that, we're ready to start editing and that's what we're going to do in part three of this basic training tutorial. If you wanna know a lot more about this program, be sure to check out our books and be sure to check out our website where we've got a whole library of great tutorials for Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements and that's muvipix.com. I'm Steve Grizzetti, see you in part three.